Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for everything that's already going on in this house, Lord. It's been, a, it's been wonderful to worship. God, my goodness, Father. Worship, Lord. What a time this morning in worship. What a beautiful name. What a, and I love the way that song ends. What a powerful name, the name of Jesus. And Lord, it's the power of Jesus' name in his word that brings this word to life, Father. Without the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ, this word, is, it becomes just another book. But when Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, comes into this word, it goes from a Logos word to a Rhema word. It's quickened and it's made alive and it's, it now can be applied in our lives and we can begin to see results from the word of God. So Father, we don't want to have just a Bible in our hand. We want to have life in our hand today, God. And so Lord, we thank you for it right now. Everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to start off today with a question. Of course, you know me, I like questions. What is God's primary method of getting his plan and his purpose and his message across in the earth we live on? Us. How many would say us? How many would agree with us if you didn't say it? Okay, all right. People. People, I mean, he didn't design trees to do it. He didn't design water to do it. He didn't design any animal to do it. He didn't design any of the elements of the earth to do it. He designed one specific thing in his image, might I add you, that he would be able to come into them and them serve his purpose and spread the gospel and let everyone get saved. That's pretty heavy, ain't it? And you and I were created for that according to scriptures, amen? Now, if we're that avenue, if we're that vehicle to get the plan, the will, and the, and the word of God on the earth spread and there's no other where to get it, then what is our job to do? How, how, how are we supposed to, how's that supposed to happen? Bless you. That didn't sound like it hurt. That was one of them I think they tried to hold in, but it's just like, Pew! you know, it kind of back loads up in the brain somewhere. But anyway, I don't even know who it was, so don't get angry at me, okay? It's the beauty of these lights. But anyway, y'all may want to check on that person. But anyway, so, so really, I mean, if we're it, how's it supposed to happen through us? Well, you know. We've got to just basically, if we're if we're the av if we're we're what God's going to use, then we just got to serve God. Somebody say serve God. Amen. I mean that's really it. it really is, <laughs> it really is that simple. If we have accepted Him and we belong to Him and He's got something for us to do, if we just are obedient and we serve God, then God's plan, His purpose, and His gospel is going to go everywhere we go if we serve in Him. Amen. Somebody said, turn your neighbor and say it's okay. Now, now, so, so if we connect to God, then we're an avenue for God to use in the earthly realm. Because he's not going to use anything else. Amen? So, if we're not connected to God, then how's the gospel going to be spread over the earth? The answer is, it's not. Can the gospel be preached by anybody else? And the answer is no. Now, I know what the word says, the trees declare his glory and all the creation declares his glory, but they don't have a voice like we do. They don't have an anointing like we do. They don't get saved and filled with his spirit like we can. So we are the only avenue God, and, and God knew what he was doing. He knew if he got men and women saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and his power and his word, that they would have a natural draw and a natural desire to do what God says do to serve him in that capacity, be connected to him, amen? Amen? And so this morning, the message is called, everybody say, conduit. Conduit. Now, this is not a prayer stick. <laughs> Sometimes I wished it was. But anyway, <laughs> this is a piece of conduit. Amen? How many know what conduit does? Hmm? How many know what conduit does? A lot of you, especially men. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a little bit, man. This is going to be, <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. But let's get to some scriptures. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and tell them this right here. Say, you are God's conduit. And you may say, I don't even know what conduit is. It looks like a piece of pipe to me. I'm God's pipe, yes. Okay, <laughs> you can be God's pipe if you don't understand the word conduit. Okay, but, but we're going to go over that. And I want to pull up one of the scriptures, I think, that, that, that really will explain what, what conduit really is and what it does. And it's found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. I'm going to read all of it real quickly. Then we're going to go back and I want to point out some things for you. The Bible says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, talking about Jesus there, the him is Jesus, saying, teacher, what shall we do to inherit eternal life? 
And do you know that's the same question a lot of people's asking today? They want to know, what do I got to do to go to heaven? I want to be eternal alive forever in Jesus' name. Now, in the next verse, he, talking about Jesus, said to him, what's written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he says, you really ought to know this. It's already been laid out for you. So he answered him, and the next verse says, so he answered him and said, talking about he answered Jesus and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So many times we forget to leave that last part of that scripture. Love the Lord with all your soul, heart, mind, body, spirit, all this stuff. But look at that last part. Everybody read it with me. And your neighbor as yourself. Don't forget, that's also, now if, 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 you, if you could read in a, what we call a red letter Bible, the words of Jesus, those are actually the words of Jesus. He's speaking those words. Love your neighbor as yourself. Next verse. And he said to him, well, you've answered rightly. <laughs> do this and you'll live. If you just do that, you're going to live. Amen? <laughs> that guy didn't, wasn't satisfied with that answer. Next verse says, but he wanting to justify himself. <laughs> want to justify himself. How many of us want to do that so many times? But he wanted to justify himself, said to Jesus, well, <laughs> who is my neighbor? Who's my neighbor? Some of y'all are old enough to remember the, the, the neighborhood. Mr. Rogers, who was a Marine and tattooed up, but you never saw it. Some of y'all are in shock right now. Yeah, go look it up on the internet, man. Look at some, some pictures of, of Mr. Mr. Rogers without his vest, little sweater vest on. He's, he's a mean tattooed machine, amen. That dude was served our country. Go, go, Mr. Rogers, amen. You woke up a can of Mr. Rogers on somebody, amen. You got to watch those, those, you got to watch the quiet ones, you know, that seem weak and stuff. They, they'll, they'll, they'll put it on you in a heartbeat. So Jesus answered, even in the next verse, Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down to Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. The same thing can happen in Chicago, okay. Anyway, <laughs> or Birmingham or Montgomery sometimes. The dude got mugged, okay. They beat him, took his clothing, whooped him up, mugged him, stole everything he had, even his clothes, and left him half dead in the ditch. Okay, everybody understand that picture? Amen? Leaving him half dead. Next verse, verse 31. Now, by chance, a certain priest... Everybody say priest. A certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. He didn't even go to the side of the road dude was on. He's like, mm, looks like trouble. I'm going to get way over here away from that. Everybody say that was the priest. <laughs> the next verse says, says, likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. <laughs> it ain't looking good, but the dude got mugged, is it? And you know this story, verse, next verse. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had what? He had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds. He poured oil and wine and sent him on his own, set him on his own animal, picked him up, put him on his animal. And when he departed, he took two denarius and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. Then Jesus asked, asked the guy the question in the next verse. He says, so which of these do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, well, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus says, go and do likewise. It's a very simple story called the, the, the Good Samaritan. That's where we get the, the term. Everybody's heard the term, the Good Samaritan. There's ministries, even Graham's ministries, the Samaritan purse and things of that nature. Amen? So what, what was the Samaritan? He was just a conduit. He's just that pipeline that, that he had Jesus flowing through him. And when he come into a place, he connected to that man and gave him what was flowing through him. It's kind of like the blind man begging for, begging for money. And they walked up and said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I'll give to you. Rise up, take your bed and walk. And they healed the man. All because they were connected to God and they allowed God to flow through them. You see, that's what conduit does. Now, this piece of conduit is worthless unless it's connected to something. It connects to other conduit, and then it finally, the, the beginning stage of wherever conduit is the source of power, whether it be water, electricity, 
fiber optics, whatever it may be, it connects to the power, and then it flows, as long as that stick, then you put a connector, and it flows into another, then it flows into a bend, and it will go as far as the conduit is connected, and it will deliver whatever it took to. And you and I are the exact same way with God. You are God's conduit. When you're hooked to the right power, that power is available to flow through you and to someone else. It's not to flow through you and stop. And a lot of Christians, we stop the power of God with us. We want miracles for us. We want blessings for us. We want all the stuff for us and us and us and us. And God never intended you to, be a, 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 to put a cap on this and say, I want to fill you up and that's it. He wants to uncap what's in your life where it can flow to someone else. Now, some of y'all looking worried because you know what might flow out of that pipe. <laughs> Come on now. Now, if you look back up in those scriptures, here we have a priest is the first one that walks by. The person that's supposed to be most connected to God. The person that's supposed to represent God in the earth, be God's right hand man. The priest walks by and says, no, I'm not even going to fool with that. That tells me right out of the gate. He may have had a title, but he didn't have no relationship. And let me tell you something, I don't care what your title is today, you can be a pastor, an elder, you can be a, a deacon, you can be an a, a, a apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, you can be one. It don't matter what your title is if you're not connected. The biggest title you can have is child of God connected to God. That outweighs any title. Amen? So the first one was a priest, the person who was most supposed to be representing and God flowing through him should have went over there tapped into that guy and done that right out of the gate and it shouldn't have been the end of the story and if it's not bad enough a levite come now the a levite is where the priest came from so all levites are aware that they have a priestly anointing a priestly adorning of them and they know the law about the priesthood even if they're not serving as a priest yet most of them are wanting to make a priest so here's somebody probably that says oh i want to be somebody with god one day because i'm in the lineage that i could be a priest one day they ain't going to be, see, they're wanting, a, they're wanting a position and a title more than they're wanting to serve. And we have that happening in the church today. They, well, see, this is not going to give me big recognition. Now, if I get to lead service, or if I get to sing a song, or if I get to teach this, then that's going to be recognition. That's what I want to plug into. But how many know out of this, how many know that there's, not, there's no ministry called uh, Levite's Purse? There's not even a ministry called Priestly Purses. But the Samaritan, not looking for glory, not looking for a title or a position, just looking to flow what God's got going to him and through him, finds a person in need and goes over there, plugs in the conduit of God to him and flows out of him and not only takes care of him, puts him on his horse, takes him in, it, it cost him time. It cost him probably getting some blood on himself. It, he had to spend his own money to do ministry and he didn't ask for a thing in return. Why? Because he's connected to the real reward. He didn't do it so this story would be written. Come on. He didn't know this story was going to be in there. <laughs> Amen? How many know your story hadn't been written completely yet either? Some of it's been written. Up to this point in life, it's been written, but hopefully you'll live longer than today. And you've got the rest of your life for your story to be, to be remaining. Now, how many of you want stories of you passed stuff by? Just like you didn't invite somebody that could have got saved that day. You didn't participate in nothing. You were just don't want to do that normal Christian life that sends people to hell. Did, that, did I have to say that out loud in my real voice? Yeah, that normal Christian life that can send some people to hell. See, Christianity is a word. True Christianity is when you're plugged into God and God's flowing through you. Amen. See, the Bible says you'll know a tree by the fruit it produces. Why? Because it's connected to the ground, it's connected to the minerals, it's connected to the, to the DNA inside of it that makes it put out the fruit that it's supposed to put out. And the Bible says if it's not producing fruit, they'll just cut that sucker down and throw it in the fire, which is representation of <laughs> hell. Let's just come, look at your neighbor and say, let's just say it. Now, how many know, again, this is useless if nothing's flowing through it. It's just a piece of pop. I mean, you could use it for a few other things. You could crack somebody in the head, self-defense. You know, you could use it for a, what we call a cheater bar. But, but it, it was designed for something to flow through it. And just like this was designed for something to flow through it, you were designed in God's image for God to flow through you. Not just to you, but through. Everybody say, through me. Now, if nothing is flowing through this, 
then it is not serving it, the purpose it was created. Just again, let's, let's make the connection here. If we're not serving God, then we're not serving the purpose that we were created for in the beginning. Because we were created to serve God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, how many of you live in a place that has beds, lighting, and, and stuff like that? And you flip a switch and the light comes on and you turn on, you got a refrigerator to keep stuff semi-cold nowadays. Okay, you got a microwave where you cook all your meals. <laughs> Glory to God. Stop that. You have, if, if something goes wrong, the, the, the Joe Weeder guy or whoever you got power with will come up and say, now where does your service come in at? That's what they call it in industrial. Where's the service line come in? Where does the service at? You say, well, the weather head's right out there, and it's the conduit that runs into your house where the, the wires come in and run through conduit down to your box and distributes the power through your house. But notice they don't call it, where's, the, where, where's, your, where's your power box at? Where's, where's the service in? Because they know that what they've put up is only for one reason, for that power to be served to your house, to serve your needs, to serve your lights, to serve your refrigeration, to serve your air conditioner. Thank you, God, in the south we have air conditioner. Hallelujah. I just want to praise break through the air conditioner. Hallelujah. But that's what it's called. It's called, where's your service at? And it comes through the conduit. And then they can trace it down and fix it and do whatever it is. You and I are God's conduit. Say, uh-huh. You know what Jesus was? He was the conduit of the Father. He came where everything the Father wanted to happen could really flow through one man and the whole plan of salvation could come. Now, what would have happened if Jesus would have disconnected from the Father? He wouldn't have had the power to go to the cross. He wouldn't have had the power to come up out of the grave. He wouldn't have had the power to resurrect and ascend to the Father. His power was because he was connected to God the Father. Yeah, but he was Jesus. Who lives in you? And my Bible says the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the grave lives in me, that same spirit. Amen? Amen? So look at your neighbor and say, you're conduit. You getting an understanding now? Now, to prove this to you about Jesus, let me go to Mark chapter 10, verse 45. The, everybody say, the Bible says. The Bible says, for even the Son of Man did not come to serve. Come on, pay attention. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served. Didn't say he didn't come to serve says right the opposite but the son of man did not come to be served say those next three words but to serve and give a give his life as a ransom for many now notice it says many there why does it say all because he knew not everybody's going to accept jesus not everybody's going to plug into what god's doing not everybody's going to allow god to flow through them he knew that now he he died for all come on he died for all, but not everybody's going to accept his death and resurrection and live for him and be that conduit for him. And it's not his fault. He's done his part for you. Amen? <laughs> so the problem is we want to be served versus serving. Come on, somebody. We know that's happening in today's time. We, the church, want to be served, not serve. Come on, I, I, I want to take it even a step further. I better put this pipe down while I'm preaching this. I love it. I anoint somebody. We want to come do church for us. Come on, we do. Lord, I want to do church for me. I want church to fill my need. But you're already saved. You're connected to God. There's somebody laying in the ditch about half dead on their deathbed. It needs you to connect Jesus to them. And you're, you're, you're who God has chosen. And sometimes, you know what? That person don't understand resurrection. That person don't speak Christianese. That person don't look like you do. But that doesn't mean that they don't need Jesus. And if all we do is come into the house of God and we sing Christian and we look Christian and we talk Christian and we have a good Christian time, the lost person's going, man, I don't even know what that's about. See, we've gotten so high up like the Levite and the priest sometimes. When y'all get saved, y'all can come up here with us. See, that's somebody that's totally unplugged for God. God went to sinners. He ate in sinners' homes. He hung out with sinners. Come on, somebody. 
But the church, we draw back from sinners, forgetting that sometimes we're the chief of them. Come on, is that not what Paul said? He said, I'm the chief sinner among all of you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lest we forget what we were forgiven from. So we're, we are put here for one purpose only. That is to serve and to be connected, to be a conduit where what heaven wants to come to earth can flow to earth through us. Good preaching, amen, I'll help you. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua says here, it says in the Bible here, it says, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, you know, to a lot of Christians, that's the way they feel like. They don't like to use the word evil here, but they just like to use the word, well, that's really just not for me. It's just, you know, it's just not my personality. You need to send that personality to hell before it takes you there. And you need to grab heaven's personality and let heaven's personality flow through you. That's why, like we talked about last week, by the way, I want to thank all you guys for the positive comments on the message. I got one finally. <laughs> hey, it felt good, man. I had a lot of people feedback from last week's message about how it helped them understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit and things like that. And, and I want to encourage you to make sure you listen to parts one and two of the simplicity of the Holy Spirit, okay? But, but again, it, it's, about just, it's about letting God flow through you. Why get saved if you ain't going to let God flow through you? Why get saved if you want to continue to do what you want to do? When you get saved, that means you've made something bigger than you and better than you, and you make your life about him. And his name's Jesus. Amen? Amen. And why wouldn't you want to serve? I've never understood. I got saved, but I don't want to do nothing now. <laughs> so if it seems evil <laughs> to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this name who you will serve. Whether you will serve the gods of your father that served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. I love what Joshua says. He says, but for me and my house, we're going to be connected to God. We're going to be conduit and we're going to serve God the rest of our lives. Yeah. Me and my house. I just can't get my teenager to get up and come to church with me no more. Borry my stick. See, the problem is, if you think that's an option in your house, then you already, the teenager ain't got the problem, you got the problem. What teenagers going on, unless they've really been raised up in it, it's time to go to church, I'm tired. Teenagers are always hard. Yeah, except 11, between 11 and 3 o'clock in the morning, they're not tired. It's not an option. For a house that's connected to God. I grew up, it wasn't, I mean, you didn't think about even staying at home on Sunday. Sunday was the day you got up went to church. And I'm proud, to, I'm proud of that. And I'm proud that, that my kids don't know what it's like to have an option whether or not they get to go to church. As a matter of fact, they don't have an option about anything in their life until they reach a certain age. And then even then, I still want to. <laughs> but anyway. If it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, why do you want to get saved? Now, here's the thing you may not realize. Is you're already serving somebody. Yeah. See, you're conduit, whether you're conduit for God or not, you're still conduit. Something, you, you are serving something, and something is flowing through you. And do you know conduit comes in another form called PVC? And PVC is used mainly for plumbing. So in other words, you may be connected to a toilet. And all that may be flowing through you, pardon my French and bless my wife, you may just be flowing a bunch of crap. But whatever you're serving, if you're serving a bunch of crap, you're going to flow a bunch of crap. If you're serving a holy God, you're going to serve. You're going to flow in a holy God life. So <laughs> you need to know what you're connected to. It's vitally important today that you leave here knowing what you, what's flowing through your. Some of y'all don't know who's, who's flowing through what. Y'all already judging some people up in here. 
Here, you, know, you, you mean to tell how you know what you're flowing through your pipe, through your conduit? Now listen, you will only flow through your conduit, and you are flowing, you're serving something already every day. You're serving. You're flowing something. You will only flow through your life what you actually worship. Wow. What you worship is what will flow through you. The priest in them worship themselves. They worship prestige and precision and, and a place in society. Therefore, they wouldn't think to lower themselves to go flow to that person there because they were not connected to the one true God. So they worship those things. So whatever it is you truly worship is what's going to flow through your life. Listen to me now. If you've got marriage problems, it's because of what's flowing through you too. And if you look back, it's what you're worshiping. If your kids are going through something, you're having a problem with your kids, what's flowing through you is flowing through them. Did it get real quiet in here just then or what? Was it just me? The next verse I want to read to you is a, a powerful verse. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. And it says this. It's where Jesus is talk, teaching some people how to pray. I, I, we call it the disciples' prayer. It's the disciples' prayer. It's not the Lord's prayer because he couldn't pray this prayer for himself. He had to teach them how to pray this because in one part of it says, forgive me of my transgressions. And God didn't have no transgressions. So he's teaching the disciples what because he knew we were going to have some. So I'm not, I'm not splitting hairs on words. I'm fine with it. I know I understand. I'm not, <laughs> if you call it the Lord's prayer, you're going to hell. <laughs> you know, no, you're not, okay? Just, just get over yourself. But I love this part that proves my point about the first question I really asked. Who, what's God's avenue? What do we do? What's it look like? And what happens if we don't? The Bible says, he says, when you pray, he says, your kingdom, talking about God's kingdom come, and God's will, his will, his plan, his purpose, his gospel, his will be done where? On earth, not as it is in the earthly realm, but just as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, just like it is in heaven. So now, if you're the conduit to that, then you are going to bring heaven to earth wherever you're at. Woo! When you walk by somebody and they don't need, they don't need an encouragement. They need for you to bring heaven to them on earth where they can understand it, where they can apply it, where they can receive it and walk into glory and be connected to God themselves. See, we want to connect them to God. But you can't connect someone to God when you're not connected to them. If you connect them to religion, you can learn them. But if you connect them to God, whoo, their life is going to be, everybody say, radically changed. So, so there's a lot of, you know, everybody says, I don't know the will of God. I don't know the will of God in my life. Well, right there it is. His will on earth as it is in heaven. So if you're not plugged into heaven, no wonder you're confused about what's going on in earth. It's time to plug into heaven today, amen, and begin to understand. Listen now, sometimes every, uh, uh, there's a th strap throats going around right now, isn't it? Isn't that one of the big bad boys that's going around right now? Do you know how many Christians are professing they're going to get it right now? I mean, they're just saying, hey, bring on the strap. They're just like blasting it, telling the spirit realm, hey, bring it on, man. You know, strap's going around. You know we always get that in our house. It'll just run through all of us. I just know it will. Well, enjoy it. I prefer to go with the scripture. It says his will is on earth as it is in heaven. Hmm, in heaven, has anybody got strep throat in heaven? No. So I'm just going to live in a heavenly realm. Well, what happens if you get strep throat, Mr. Man of God? I'm going to get healed of it. I got a fallback scripture that says by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Amen? Have I been sick before? Yes, I have. But it wasn't because I invited it. And my God still healed me because I'm alive, standing Today, breathing, hallelujah. Now, let's take the next step, amen? For you to be saved. How many of you got saved in here? How'd that happen? I mean, besides God, how did you hear about God? How many of you got saved because, how many got saved because of, of, of somebody was standing up preaching the word of God and you responded to it? Raise your hand if that's the way you got saved. How many of you got saved because a friend shared the gospel with you? Ooh, I like those hands. How many of you got saved because you've you seen some Christians or you've seen something in your life that kind of began to draw you into Jesus Christ and things of that nature? 
few of them, okay? So most of us got saved in here because of a friend or because of somebody preaching the gospel or something or wherever you heard it at. But how many know that, did anybody just get saved out of your own knowledge about Jesus without anybody telling you anything? You didn't read a Bible, just poof, you got saved? So someone else was involved with your salvation besides Jesus, right? Absolutely. That's the design of God. God designed it that way. Again, for people to get saved, saved people are to reproduce and multiply and make more saved people. And it's not just the pastor. Ah! Some of y'all, that may shock you. It's not just my job to do it. It's every born-again believer's job to do that. Amen? Amen? Everybody's conduit. And you're flowing something. Amen? So for you to get saved, somewhere in your life, you connected with someone else that had a conduit from God. Aren't you glad that whoever it was that in your life, um, uh, it could have been a mom and dad, a grandparent, a pastor, an elder, a brother, a neighbor, somebody at work, somebody was connected with God that connected to you, and you got connected. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, why stop it with you? Who are you to say it's going to stop with me now? Somebody else did what they were supposed to do that got me in, got me connected to God. I'm saved. Now, how dare you stop the flow of God? Who do you think you are? Because there's, 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 there's something about a flow that when it doesn't flow, it begins to be stopped up. And it can be fresh water flowing, but when fresh water stopped up and it can't flow, it begins to grow bacteria and become nasty and stanky. So today, and, and I'm really not trying to be rude or crude here, either you are flowing with God or you're damned up. What does a dam do? Stops the flow. And, and, and I chose the word damned up because it's not a cuss word in the context. But the Bible says when you don't receive Christ, you are damned to hell. You've damned yourself to hell. How do you damn yourself? You stopped up. It's bad enough you do it for yourself, maybe. But how many know maybe you've damned up your kids, your neighbors, your friends, and other people from going to heaven because you won't allow God to flow through you? He's just trying to put it on us today. <laughs> it's already on you. I just want you to be aware of it where you'll say yes to God and quit saying no. No, no. <laughs> Come on, some touch me. It's okay. So out of all the things that's God's will, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many believe up in heaven, God wants every person that can possibly be reached to be reached for Jesus? So we know that it is the will of God for everyone to be saved. How many would agree it's God's will for people to be saved? Raise your hand. I mean, even if you disconnected from this message, please answer the question today by the raising of hand. I believe it's God's will for everyone to get saved. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. How's that going to happen? God's just going to mystically save them. No. God's going to come into their will and break their will and make them get saved. No. God's going to do what he's always done since Jesus. He's going to use his greatest creation created in his image to be connected to him to flow it into other people. We know it is the perfect will of God for everyone we meet, see, come in contact with to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit and going to heaven. Hallelujah. But that ain't going to happen until they connect. You got connected to someone one day and it brought you salvation through Jesus. Now, again, they didn't do it. They, they just were the conduit. We're not the, we're not the power. We have the power in Jesus' name. Okay? We, I can't save anyone, but I can. you connect with me and what I got, it'll save you, I promise. And his name's Jesus. So somebody done it for you. And the vast majority of Christians today are saying, but I'm not going to do it for anybody else. Oh, Lord, I'm glad you flowed through me, but I'm going to cap mine, and I'm just going to keep me going to heaven right here. Oh, look at that. I'm going to heaven. Nobody else going with me, but I'm going. Congratulations. You may not make it as far as you think. I mean, I'm not trying to set in judgment or put you anywhere, but again, I've never seen anyone who's really saved that didn't want to obey what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, go therefore now and make, ba and make disciples out of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we just want to hire a preacher to do that. See, my, my problem is I've never been for hire because you can't afford me. <laughs> I love y'all. 
So do you want to be conduit or do you want to be a dam? Guess what? You're already one of those things right now. But I'm telling you, you're not really damned up. Something's coming through. It may just be a drop or two of evil. It may be a drop or two of rebellion. It may be a drop or two of unforgiveness. But you are flowing something and it's hitting somebody else. See, the thing you don't understand is <laughs> when the priest walked by and the Levite walked by, they flowed to that man what they thought of him. It affected that man. Now, they didn't realize it affected him. But he knew they walked by. It affected him. So when it comes time to trust somebody of the tribe, who do you think this man's going to trust now? When a priest walks up to him and says, oh, I'm in the priesthood. Let me give you advice. Let me pour into your life. He's going to look at him and go, uh-uh, I don't want no part of you. Well, well the Samaritans, they don't have no class like the Le Levitical class. because we're the, They really were, were a classless people at that time. But when one of them walks up and says, hey, man, can I tell you something? Yeah, man, I know you. I know your spirit. I know you, man. You flow through me, man. You, you show me, gee, you show me what God looks like in the flesh. Amen? Got one more scripture. Everybody okay with that? Come on up, guys. Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Luke 4, 8. And Jesus answered and said to him, this is right after Jesus, bapt or this is right after Jesus was baptized. He was taken up into the wilderness, and Satan himself was tempting God here. And, and Satan had tempted him here, and here's the answer Jesus gave him. Get behind me, Satan. I love that. <laughs> yeah, don't tell your spouse that. It don't work real good. <laughs> For it is written. <laughs> Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship. Everybody say worship. worship. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you what? <laughs> Woo, serve. <laughs> Say that with me again. Let's just do it. Mufasa. One, two, three. Serve. Ooh. Ooh. That word serve. Not be served. Serve. Look at it again. See, see the part written. In, in, with, see the part with the little parentheses around it? Starts with, get thee behind me. That's where it's written in red. So Jesus was actually saying, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. And you shall only, shall only, yeah, you know what I mean, serve him. <laughs> That'll preach. That's the, that's the J-I-V, Joey International Version. <laughs> him only you shall serve. Now, some of you a while ago looked like you almost wanted to get offended when I said you will flow. And how you can tell what you're flowing is is by what you're worshiping. And some of you I felt in the room might have almost got offended to that, like, well, I can't believe you tell me I don't worship Jesus just because I don't flow him all the time. <laughs> See, you flow in an attitude right there. And the reason I said what you worship is what you will flow is because of this scripture. Because it says you shall what? Worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve what you worship you will serve so in other words what you worship is what's actually flowing through you to other people so what's flowing through you today is God flowing through you today you may not ever run up on somebody that's hurt and laying in the ditch but man you cross paths with people all day who are hurting they're dying inside they are battling demons they are battling life they are battling depression they putting on a good face man you you know they used to go to church but you don't know if they go to church anymore you don't know even and we don't even care enough to ask man how you doing we won't even i mean heck two-thirds of the church not this church of course <laughs> but two-thirds of a lot of churches won't will not invite anyone to easter service they just won't I'm embarrassed, Pastor. I'm glad Jesus wasn't embarrassed to be stripped butt naked and hang on a cross for you. He knew that was coming, by the way. He knew he'd be not only beaten, but he knew he would be humiliated by being stripped and hung on a cross. He could have said, hmm, that's just gonna be, I mean, that's just too humiliating for me. Uh, just, I'm going to call the angels down and just kill everybody. 
He had the power to do that. Are you, are you listening to me? He had the power to knock everybody out, take the whole world out. Why did he not do that? Because he was connected to the Father's plan. He was connected, and he knew when he was connected, what was going to flow through him would literally be able to flow through every born-again believer the world would ever have from that point on. And it would literally be the difference between heaven and hell for you and me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Scripture even says he did not despise the shame of the cross. So for us to be embarrassed to ask somebody to church, get over yourself. It ain't about you. You may totally blow it. Don't worry about it. I want to invite you to the, see the devil in our church. I mean, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I invite you to defeat the, in, the Jesus in our church. No, I, you want to come to Easter? Again, I really believe that the, the mass majority of people who thought I ever about going to church, are they're waiting for someone this week to invite them. They're waiting to see if anybody that they say, who they know is Christian is really connected enough to even invite them. And guys, it's not about inviting them here. Just, just get them in church somewhere. They don't have to come here. But man, this is, this, is, this, is the, this is the golden egg moment in Christianity for people to come into the church and for us to have a shot at presenting them a Jesus that will save their life. Man, let's make sure we're plugged in. You can go to our social media and, and put out stuff again. All that's, all that's great, we, and we encourage you to do that. But nothing is, is as powerful as a one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, man, I love you. I want to invite you to church. You and your family. Well, we don't know if we want to go up to Eva, that church. Well, man, yeah. hey, you know what? Go somewhere. Just, man, just make, let's make a pact with each other. We're going to be in church. We're going to have our families in church this week, this Sunday. Try it. If you don't like it, you ain't got to go back. But it's just you can, you, can, you can sit for an hour and a half or so and suffer through it. And they might just get saved. And the family might get saved, and the kids might get saved. Who's not willing to take that chance? Amen? So let's stand to our feet this morning. If you're here this morning and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, you're the real reason I'm here. I mean, I like everybody else, but you're the real reason my love's here. Now, some of y'all look like y'all got offended at that. See, your, your love ought to be for the body, yes, but the body's got to be in love with people who don't know Jesus yet. Amen? <laughs> huh? Yes. We are, our target is not to save people who are already saved. Our target is to connect with people who are lost and hurting and going to hell, who's in the ditch about to die. Physical, spiritual, mentally, marriage, whatever. I'm not a doctor, but I can hook you up with Jesus. I'm not a psychologist, but I can hook you up with the wisdom of God. Okay? I can just, again, I don't have much to offer, but I am connected to the one who has everything. And if you allow me to connect with you, I'll just, all I'm going to do, I'm not going to give you me, I'm just going to give you what's flowing through me, which is Jesus. That ought to be, that's every one of us in here today, amen? But if that's not you, you're not flowing with God, we want to invite you to get saved this morning, amen, church? If you're watching by, by TV or whatever, or, or by internet today, we want to invite anyone that's listening today to come to the knowledge and get your conduit plugged into Jesus and start flowing in the power of God. Amen? We don't, we don't expect you to join Journey Church today or join us. We just want you to connect it to Jesus. Jesus will begin to flow through you and show you your steps from then on. Amen? Amen. We'll help you in any way we can. But I want us to pray today. And if you make this decision today, maybe to get born again, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, or if you're here today and say, you know what, I was connected at one time, but I feel like I've been disconnected. I promise you, Jesus didn't pull your plug. And all you got to do to ever be connected to God is say, God, I want to be reconnected. Man, he'll, poof, he'll sock that, that, that coupling on you, and you'll be right there with him. So maybe you need to rededicate your life today. I don't know. But we're all going to pray together here in just a moment. And then I want you to remain standing in a minute. We're going we're gonna to do something a little different today at the end with prayer and, and, and tithes and offerings today. So just hang out with me. Okay, let's pray together. Say, Father. <laughs> woo! Come on, woo! <laughs> That's just for him to do. Don't do that, honey. No, let's come on. Let's one more time. Woo! <laughs> Lord, I just, I just had a vision of Ric Flair for some reason. I don't know. But anyway. Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> Lord, 
I love you. I love what flows through you because you are filled with spirit, God. You are filled with life, God. You are filled with joy and happiness, God. God, you are filled with, with everything we need. You are filled with success, God. Lord, just, just being tapped into you is the greatest journey we'll ever walk here on the earth, God. And Lord, we just want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to be on that same journey with us today, God. We're not part of a, a, a denominational thing, God. We're not part of a, a man-made. Lord, we're just hooked up with some Jesus power. Amen. And so, Father, we just want to come to that today, Father. So say this to me. Say, Father, here I am today, God. Lord, without you, I will not make it to heaven. But I know with you, I can seal my eternity today and know that I know that I'll be in heaven. But I have to do something. I confess that I'm a sinner and I have no hope. But Father, I ask you to come in right now, the King of glory, my hope and my salvation. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins and all my past. Make me a new person as only you can do. I renounce my sin and my past and I ask you to come and be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name today, I want to be your conduit where you can flow heaven to earth to me and through me and let it be all for your glory. Today in Jesus' name, I commit my life to Christ or I recommit my life to Christ. I am hooked up with Jesus from now on. Flow through me, Lord and Savior, for your glory. In Jesus' name, can I have an amen above amen today? Come on, come on, let's give him some glory, amen.